Okay, good morning, seniors. This is our screen lecture here for Friday, September 20th. Um, getting into our Constitution, right? You guys had started reading the Constitution this week. We've uh, been studying our amendments and such. Um, the Constitution, as you guys have found out, includes much more than just the 27 amendments. We also have our seven articles that discuss the structure and our inner workings of our U.S. government. So before we talk about structure, get into any of that, I just want you to have an understanding of the basic themes or the basic principles of the Constitution and how our and how our government is structured to reflect these principles. So one of the the basic principles of our Constitution is the idea of popular sovereignty. That's something we've we've discussed before in class. And again, that's just simply the idea that people give the government power to govern us, right? It's kind of like the idea of consent of the govern that we give as people, we give the government permission to govern us. Um, the Constitution includes um, the amendment process, which the people have a say-so in changing the Constitution. That's something that goes back to the states. Um, if we were to ever amend our Constitution again, add a, a 28th Amendment or, or you know, et cetera, right? So we have that amendment process in the Constitution to reflect popular sovereignty that people, we have the ability to change our Constitution as we see fit. You know, over the course of time, we've amended the Constitution to abolish slavery, to extend voting rights, to extend citizenship rights. You know, we even banned alcohol once and, and then made it illegal again or made it legal again. We've um, established a federal voting age. So understand that the amendment process in particular is a great example of popular sovereignty that people um, have the ability to change the government as they see fit. Uh, our second theme here we'll talk about is limited government. Um, our our U.S. government is, is limited in its power and the idea that we have three separate branches of government. Each of those three branches of government have specific powers. It's kind of also the idea of separation of powers, but understand that our government is not all powerful, despite the fact that it seems like that sometimes, and it's you know very evident some days more than others. But uh, the way our constitution is written is to reflect the principle of limited government in the sense that the government's power is limited. Federal, or excuse me, central national government, as well as the state governments. All right, and then we get into our idea of separation of powers, which is again, it, it's kind of a reflection of limited government. The idea that we have three branches of government, and those three branches of government have very specific powers, right? So in Articles One, Two, and Three, that's where our legislative, executive, and judicial branches are discussed, their structure, and their powers, right? So if we look at Article One of the Constitution, that discusses Congress, and in Article One, um, Section Eight, it lists all the powers of Congress. Okay, Article Two, the executive. Um, Talking more so about our president and vice president, there are specific powers discussed in there as well. And then with our judicial branch, um, their power to interpret the law and, and do that sort of thing. But we separate out our, our powers um, and have our three very separate branches of the government basically to ensure that no branch becomes all powerful. And it kind of reflects this idea of checks and balances. And this diagram, I know it's kind of fuzzy in the PowerPoint. Um, if you look at page 73 in your textbook, there's an awesome diagram in there. And I would be familiar with this. So the idea of separation of powers and checks and balances, those are two of the more commonly confused uh, principles. Separation of powers simply refers to the three separate branches and, and the powers that they possess. Checks and ba balances, excuse me, basically refers to the fact that each branch has a specific power that checks or limits the power of another branch, basically to ensure that no branch becomes all powerful. So for example, one power that the legislative branch has is to create laws. That is their essential function is to, to create legislation. A check that the executive branch holds over the legislative branch, a power that the executive branch has that limits the power of the legislative branch is to veto, right? And just in turn, the legislative branch holds a check over the executive that the legislative branch with a two thirds vote by both House and the Congress can override a veto. Um, the judicial branch holds a check over the legislative branch in the sense that they can rule laws or actions to be unconstitutional. So again, checks and balances basically refers to how the powers of these three branches limits the power of another branch. Be familiar with the diagram. We'll do more work with this in class next week. Um, we talk about the idea of judicial review. Um, there's, this word is not used is not used in the Constitution, but it's a very important power that was established in the early 1800s by a Supreme Court case, Marbury v. Madison. We'll talk more about that later because um, it's, a, it's kind of a big deal in our nation's history in the, the sense that judicial review is established. But basically what it means, it's the power of the courts to determine constitutionality or to determine laws or actions to be unconstitutional. Now, that's, you know, when we think interpreting the law, and that's what the judicial branch does, 
that it would make sense. However, this word is not actually used, okay? Um, this word is not actually used in, in the Constitution. It's a principle that gets established by the Marbury v. Madison case in the John Marshall Supreme Court in the early 1800s. Um, so keep that in mind, okay? But this is another very important theme that we have a, a court system that can determine the constitutionality of laws. Okay, we also talk about federalism. We'll do an entire chapter on this later. Um, again, a nice diagram here, but federalism refers to the idea of how we split our powers between our national government and our state governments. Okay, so in our constitution, right, Article 1, Section 8, and then the other articles that say these are the powers of the legislative branch, these are the powers of the president, this is the power of the judicial branch. Those are all um, the national powers, right? The You'd call them the expressed powers, right? That these are the powers that the national government has, Okay. Um, we do have a Tenth Amendment that we've been talking a little bit about with the Bill of Rights. There's also a, a statement in the in the Constitution, Tenth Amendment, that says all powers not given to the federal government are reserved for the states. So over the course of time, the national government, the states, I mean, there's a lot of headbutting over this, over who does the power actually belong to. And then there's a handful of powers that are actually shared. So like, for example, in the Constitution, it explicitly says Congress has the power to declare war. That is a national power, right? Um, it does not say anything specifically in the Constitution about marriage, therefore, something an issue like marriage, marriage laws, age of consent, that kind of thing, that goes back to the states, okay? And that would be an example we call a reserve power, a power belonging to the states. And then there's a handful of other powers that are quote unquote shared, like the idea of taxes, right? Um, 16th Amendment, federal government can tax income. In North Dakota, we can also tax income. The state can tax income. So understand that federalism is kind of like taking a sheet of paper, ripping it in half. One sheet, one side of the paper represents the power of the federal government or national government. Other side represents the state, and then the kind of the tarried line um, represents um, represents the um, the shared powers. Okay, so be aware of these uh, principles, um, and we will talk more about them on Monday. Have a good.